Hello, I'm Thomas White, and my focus over the last 30 years has been on managing global portfolios. I would like to share with you our firm's 2016 predictions for the top performing developed and emerging market regions. I think they will surprise most investors. The Great Recession was nature's way of eliminating unsustainable business activities. Conditions since 2008 have forced investment managers to assess how well countries are adapting. In this environment, country outlooks vary more than in the past. Accordingly, getting regional portfolio weights correct is more important than ever. The current regional weights in the Thomas White International Portfolios reflect our conclusions in the following four areas. Past quantitative easing programs show that a country's equity markets remain strong over the entire length of their QE programs. It typically takes from three to five years of progressively larger bond purchases to produce a mild but sustained economic recovery. Assuming this pattern continues, we feel that amongst developed markets, Continental Europe and Japan will be the top performing regions in 2016. Within the emerging markets in 2016, we believe China and India will be the top performing countries. Given China's growth outlook, it amazes our team that many of its attractive blue chip companies sell at single digit PEs. It is no wonder our emerging markets portfolios currently have a significant overweight in the world's second largest economy. The bargain prices partially reflect a very visible Chinese misstep earlier this year. The country's 2014 effort to speed up its citizens' stock ownership produced a public relations nightmare. It was one of the Chinese policymakers' few missteps in their 30-year transformation of the country into the world's second largest economy. That said, it left many foreign investors with a negative impression of China. We believe the truth is very different. Policymakers are busy transforming China from its past export orientation to a more balanced economy with the goal of having over 60% of its GDP growth coming from domestic services and consumption. Export-oriented heavy industries are being consolidated, while private business owners are doing well. Retail sales grew 11% in November. Consumption, seen as a percent of GDP growth, rose to over 50% for the first time in the third quarter. Given India imports 80% of its energy needs, it is a major beneficiary of lower energy prices. Soon to have the world's largest population, India's potential has long been restrained by powerful local politicians behaving as if they were royalty in a medieval feudal system. They consistently block progress as it would cause them to lose control over their realms. India's labor costs now are far lower than China's, and it has over 600,000 farmers seeking job opportunities. This means India has the resources to repeat China's 25-year growth miracle. Premier Modi's Made in India campaign desperately needs to expand the country's manufacturing exports to offset its vulnerability to rising energy prices. If he succeeds, India could become the world's dominant investment theme over the next several decades. Our emerging market portfolios are moderately overweight India. Lastly, we believe that industrial metals are likely to decline another 50% from their current prices. China's transformation to a consumer-driven economy means that it will no longer require the amounts of industrial commodities needed in its post-2008 export-driven model. As such, our portfolios are currently underweight countries that have significant commodity exports, including Australia, Canada, Brazil, Russia, Norway, most of South America, and Indonesia.